For you guys that like my long videos, <laughs> oh, do I got a treat for you. What is up, Finn fans? So this video, essentially, I'm gonna be talking about free agency, talking about who got tagged, who didn't get tagged. There was a ton of moves yesterday. Um, so while I was doing my research and talking about like people I wanna pick up and all that stuff, there was trades that ha there was a trade that happened yesterday that I'm going to talk about. It's going to be one of the things I talk about, but this video is might be a, might be a long one. It might be about around 20 minutes, but uh, from the comments, a lot of you guys say you like the long video, so here you go, because I literally have so much things to talk about, like, it's it's ridiculous. So let's, let's, let's hurry up and jump into this shiznit. First thing you might notice, was ow, I uh, spruced up my logo a little bit. Let me know what you guys think of the logo. I'm going to start sprucing up the banner. I'm thinking about doing merch. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a bunch of things for you guys. I might do a, you know, a big fan appreciation giveaway once I hit 4,000 subs. So if we can hit 4,000 subs, I might do that. You know, I got a lot of things planned for you guys because a lot of what you guys do and a lot of what I do is for you guys. So I want to show you guys how much I appreciate you. So I got some things planned, but let me know what you think of the new logo. And I'm going to start updating some things, starting to really spruce this channel up. So the other day, there was a few people that were upset with my video about the best and worst draft picks, which I expected. We're all going to have a difference of opinion. Some of you guys like this person, some of you guys like that person, some of you guys thought Charles Harris should have been on there, which it's too soon for me to put Charles Harris on there. Yeah, he's having a rough time. It's also because he's coming from a 3-4 outside linebacker to a 4-3 defensive end. It's not his fault that, you know, dumbass drafted him in the wrong freaking scheme. Um, but some of you guys forgot that I was just doing first, second round picks. Um, and then some of you guys were like, no Ronnie Brown, Chris Chambers. I love Chris Chambers. One of my all-time favorite Dolphin wide receivers. Um, but just compared to the five guys I put and how dynamic they are and how much they help the team and how, like, Xavier Howard, seven interceptions in one year. Like, are you kidding me? He even play the full year. Jarvis Landry had back-to-back thousand-yard -back seasons, you know, and he's still young when we, you know, and he was a second round pick. Uh, like Ronnie Brown, it, he only had 1,000 yard rushing season and Chris Chambers, it took him about five years to get his first thousand yard receiving season. So those are the reason, again, they would have been like six and seven if I did a, a 10. Um, but I'm also thinking about doing a full fledged um, underappreciated or like later round drafts picks, but I'll talk about that later. Um, so let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Let's talk about some of the moves that have happened with the Miami Dolphins, okay? So the, the Dolphins tendered a bunch of uh, four players, and essentially what a tendering is, is they throw a tender on them, and if you want to sign them, cool, you can sign them, but you have to give us a draft pick, and I think it's the draft pick that they were drafted, um, or just like depend on the tender we put on them. So if we put like a third round tender on them, then you have to give us a third round draft pick if you want the player. I think the highest you could do is a second round tender. Um, but the Dolphins have tendered four players. Guard, Isaac Asiata. Guard slash tackle, Jesse Davis. Tackle, Zach Stirrup. And defensive end, Jonathan Woodard. If you remember in my first cut sign shiznit video, I said that the Dolphins should tender uh, Isaac Asiata and Jonathan Woodard. They did. I'm telling you, maybe, maybe your boy should be on the Dolphins. Be their GM, because this would be our logo. No, actually, this wouldn't be our logo. This would be our logo. I like this logo. I like this one. But then I would have this be our main logo. And then this would be our throwbacks that we would do three, four times a year. That's what I would do. Vote, vote for me. Andre Branch, Ted Larson were released officially yesterday. So with that release, the Dolphins are now at 15 million under the cap. And you might be asking yourself, whoa, I thought we were at 10 and I thought we get about nine and a half for releasing those two. We were at 10, but signing of Tank, uh, Tank Corridine, D Delaney and Jake Ruddick knocked us down to 5.9 million. And then the cut of um, Andre Branch and Ted Larson bumped us back up to under 15 million. That's just the beginning, boys. People are gonna get cut or traded. Speaking of traded, Robert Quinn 
He's on the trade block. Supposedly the Dolphins have been in talks with a bunch of teams. A bunch of teams have been in talks with the Dolphins about potentially trading for Robert Quinn. I could see us maybe in a sixth for him. It's more of just getting something for him instead of just getting the cap space for dumping his ass. So there's that. The other sad news. Now I know you, I, I'm in the same boat as you guys with this one I'm about to talk about. So don't come at me that this is my opinion. This is what I want to happen. I'm telling you what I'm hearing and I'm telling you what's being reported. Cameron Wake is getting a lot of interest from other teams, a lot of interest. The Dolphins are not really talking to Wake and his agent. They have, and they said they are interested in bringing him, but that was it, whereas he's getting a lot of interest from other teams. So there is a possibility. Again, I don't want this. I'm not saying that I want it. I'm not saying that it's. I'm happy about it, so don't get mad at me. There's a very good possibility Cameron Wake doesn't come back this offseason and he gets his 100th sack with a different team. Hope not. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they bring him back. But from what I'm hearing, that's the case. And then before I get into the, the, the fat of this, this son bitch, there was a big trade yesterday. The Redskins traded for Case Keenum from the Denver Broncos. So, you know. The Redskins seem like a landing spot for Tannehill, especially because Case Keenum and Tannehill have the same contract. Even though Case Keenum's money is fully guaranteed, where Ryan Tannehill's wouldn't have been if he was traded. Uh, so it, I think it just, I think it all has to come down to people don't think Ryan Tannehill is that good in the league. I, I honestly, it just seems like that's like, why would you take Case Keenum with a bigger contract with guaranteed money on it? I think there's like 10 million of his contract is guaranteed where in a trade, Ryan Tannehill, none of his money's guaranteed. Um, why would you take him over Ryan Tannehill? You know, and I think it's because people don't think Ryan Tannehill is that good. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just, this is what I'm speculating. But the Broncos get a sixth round pick from the Redskins and the Redskins get a seventh round pick from the Broncos and Case Keenum. Case Keenum traded to the Redskins, Joe Flacco traded to the Broncos. So far, two trades have happened. So those are the news that I got for you guys. You got the tenders, you got the, the releases, you got the potential trades, you got Wake unfortunately leaving, you got my new logo. And let's get into the stuff that's been happening this week. Hopefully, I'm recording this Thursday night, hopefully, uh, I'm going to post this early. This is going to be an early video, maybe like a 10 o'clock video, because I don't know if anything else is going to happen, but uh, I'm going to be on set. So if you don't know, that degree over there is for media. I went to school to do media. This whole weekend, I'm going to be on set shooting a trailer for a feature length film. Um, I'm going to still give you videos. Like if stuff comes out, I'm going to give you videos, but it might be later in the day. Um, but you're definitely going to get videos from me if something happens. But hopefully nothing happens tomorrow um, because you won't hear from me till tomorrow night because I'll be on set, okay? So let's get into the, 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 the meat and the reason why you guys clicked on it. Who got franchise tagged, who got not franchise tagged, and who got cut since my last making of this free agency video. Some big names got cut. Jamie Collins, linebacker for the Browns, cut. Eric Weddle, safety for the Ravens, cut that is big and supposedly the reason why they cut eric weddle is because the ravens are going to go real hard for tyron matthew so he got cut and mark Barron, linebacker for the rams was released so those three are all, all of a sudden thrown into that free agency pool that i was making my video off of and the, some of the top free agents then there was players that were tagged frank clark tagged i had him as one of the guys i'd like the dolphins to go for a defensive end not happen anymore he's tagged jadavion Clowney. Tagged. D Ford. Tagged. Robbie Gold. Kicker. Tagged. Who gives a shit? Grady Jarrett. Care, tagged. And Demarcus Lawrence. Tagged. So the number one defensive end in the free agency pool is tagged. Now these are the people that weren't franchise tagged. And a few of them might be a surprise. Le'Veon Bell. Not tagged. No one's surprised about that. Nick Foles. Not tagged. No one's surprised about that. He's going to the Jaguars. He's going to the Jaguars. It is what it is. You heard it here. It's going to the Jaguars. Trey Flowers, not tagged. Um, didn't really expect that him to get tagged because Bill Belichick doesn't tag anyone. He also didn't tag um, Goskowski. Missed a lot of field goals in, in the playoffs. Almost cost him the Super Bowl. He wasn't tagged. Um, but then the two names that weren't tagged, that's kind of surprising to me. Landon Collins wasn't tagged. Giants are moving on from Landon Collins. And this one made me go, what? CJ Mosley 
not tagged. CJ Mosley. I wanted the Dolphins to draft CJ Mosley so bad. And the pick before the Dolphins, the Ravens, took CJ Mosley and now he's out and available. He's gonna he's gonna cost a pretty penny, but maybe Doug wants him on the team. Now let's get into who, you know, my, my list is gonna change now. My first list, I will tag it at the end of this video if you want to see the first free agency list and notice that I, you know, some of these names that I liked are gone. Uh it's gonna change a little bit, so let's get into who I would target for the Miami Dolphins and free agency. I'm gonna go from quarterback on, right? So last time I said Teddy Bridgewater, I'd go after Teddy Bridgewater, um, but I'm hearing Teddy Bridgewater is gonna ask for a lot of money. He's gonna command a lot of money. I don't think that's gonna happen. I would still, I wouldn't mind signing Teddy Bridgewater. I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to want a lot of money. I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to, going to go into free agency expecting to get a lot of money and a lot of money being like around, you know, 12 to 15 million a year, I almost said thousand. What is this, 1968? I don't think he's gonna get that, especially because the teams that need quarterbacks is slowly becoming smaller and smaller. Like the Redskins, they don't really need a quarterback now. They got Case Keenum and you know, the Denver Broncos, they got Joe Flacco. It seems like it's like the Dolphins, the Cardinals have Josh Rosen, but then they're like, they're gonna go for Kyler Murray. Jets don't need one. Giants could go for one, but they're gonna probably get Hoskins. See what I'm saying? So he's gonna want a lot of money and then all of a sudden he's not gonna get a lot of money. Jags are gonna take Nick Foles, you know what I'm saying? So Teddy Bridgewater is still a, a reasonable person to go for if I was the Dolphins, but I kind of want the Dolphins to go for Tyrod Taylor. Kind of like the way Tyrod Taylor plays, kind of like the way that Tyrod Taylor played against us constantly. So Tyrod Taylor could be that vet, that bridge quarterback for you know the new quarterback to learn under and then come in essentially Baker Mayfield. Uh, so I'll go with Tyrod Taylor, but again, if Teddy, we can get Teddy Bridgewater for about 9 million a year, cool, I'll go with Teddy. But, Ty, so Tyrod slash Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback, there you go. Wide receivers really haven't changed. I still want Terrell Williams. I'm hearing he might get a good amount of money at wide receiver. Um, it's But you look like Adam Humphreys, Geronimo Allison, I'm looking at young, non-expensive wide receivers. I'm not dropping a lot of money on wide receivers because we still have um, Albert Wilson, Jakeem Grant, Kenny Stills, Isaiah Ford, uh, Carew is still technically with the team, and Bryce Butler. You know, we still have wide receivers on this team that can still play and still do well. Again, so, and we still have Amendola, but I don't know if he's gonna be cap casualty yet. So wide receiver's not too important, but if the Dolphins did sign a younger one, or even you know scoop one off of practice squad, or went younger at wide receiver and get one with a good upside, like I said, Terrell Williams, Geronimo uh, Allison, Adam Umphreys, I wouldn't be upset about that. And also hasn't changed for me. There is a, a tw there was a tweet, this tweet that the Dolphins are kind of going after um, Dwayne Allen, which he's old, so I don't see that. But Jesse James, I would still stick with. He's a guy that I said I want young, 25. So tight end hasn't changed. With the offensive line position, uh, I would mostly focus on guard. It all depends on what happens with Juwan James, and there's a lot of conversation with Juwan James potentially coming back. But again, I honestly think the, with Juwan, the only way Juwan James comes back is if he doesn't ask for a buttload of money. But like um, DJ Fluker, uh, I wouldn't mind. You know, I, I don't want to go old at the offensive line anymore because I'm afraid of injuries and I want to build through these offense and defensive lines. So that's what I'm thinking of, you know, like a DJ Fluker. I wouldn't mind going after him, signing him for something cheap. He's not bad, he's not too great, but he can still learn and become good under this new uh, coaching scheme. Now, defensive end. If you remember guys, last, last video I said Frank Clark and Trey Flowers. Frank Clark is franchise tag, he's out of the picture. Trey Flowers seems like it might happen, might cost us a pretty penny, might not, but I would still go for Trey Flowers. Now, my scheme for defensive line is going to change a little bit after watching this combine and really looking at the defensive line prospects in the draft because it's so deep that you don't necessarily have to, you know, jump head first into it. So I would probably just go for Trey Flowers at defensive end um, and then probably draft another defensive end, especially that speedster in the draft. Um, you guys said it's told me it's not sweet. So it's sweat. 
Is his last name Sweat? Maybe draft him if he falls to us at 13. I don't know. After putting up those numbers, I don't see him falling at 13. But defensive end, I would just stick with Trey Flowers and then um, potentially draft another one. And then with defensive tackle, again, it'd probably still stay the same for me. Uh, I'd still want to draft one. Again, this draft is deep at defensive linemen, but I'd still go with like a tr uh, Christian Covington or a Darius Fillion. Uh, defensive tackles for the Texans and the Chargers. They're young, they, they have some downsides, but they still have a lot of upside. And with our new defensive line coach who showed that he can coach really well at defensive line, can really prosper and push these guys. So again, that didn't really change for me. Now, when it comes to linebacker, that has changed for me. I want CJ Mosley. He's gonna cost some money, but CJ Mosley is the type of player that you can build around. He's a type of player that will be here after three years. He's, you know, I still like the way CJ Mosley plays. I like the, I like his style. I wanted to draft him. So the fact that he's now available for us to sign, I would, I want CJ Mosley. I'd sign CJ Mosley. Uh, you know, Kiko Alonso, having Kiko Alonso, CJ Mosley, Raekwon McMillan, Baker, the linebacker core would be really nasty, especially because you, we wouldn't have to rely on Kiko Alonso wouldn't have to rely on making covering up mistakes for Raquan McMillan and Baker. He'd have the reliance of CJ Mosley and then McMillan can learn and Baker can learn and really thrive. Now the thing that scares me the most about CJ Mosley, why didn't they franchise tag him? Why didn't they want to resign him? I'm getting flashbacks of Ellerby. And I'm like, oh, taking a Ravens linebacker scares me. But CJ Mosley, I like a lot. So I I'm, I want CJ Mosley. And then, you know, this draft isn't too great at corner. You're not going to find your boundary corner in the first round, maybe not even the second. Uh, so I would still go after Ronald Darby. Uh, he's showing that he's doing a lot on that injured leg. And he's showing that he that injured leg is healed really well. And he's still young at 25. So to put him opposite with McCain in the slot make me feel really comfortable. So I go after Ronald Darby. So the only things that have really changed for me when it came to who I want and who I'd sign. Quarterbacks change a little bit. You know, if Teddy Bridgewater asks for too much, I go for Tyrod Taylor. Kind of like Tyrod Taylor now, the more that I think about it being our quarterback. I want CJ Mosley. Defensive line is, for me, is not as big of a need. If you remember in my first video, I really wanted to go after defensive linemen, but after watching this, you know, a combine and seeing the draft and stuff, defensive line isn't too scary for me. And then wide receiver's still the same. We still are good at wide receiver. Uh, we can still draft one, you know, just draft one in the third round and still, you know, build off of that. You, you never know what you could find in these drafts. So. That's that's who I want the Dolphins to go for in free agency. And again, I said that they're not going to go big and splashy, and I still don't think they'll go big and splashy, but I want them to go big and splashy for Trey Flowers and CJ Mosley. If they can go with those two, I don't care what they do after that, I would be happy because they're, young, they're still young and they're still really talented enough that we can build around them to have CJ Mosley, Trey Flowers, um, and when we draft with the 13th pick at defensive line, Gotchow, Taylor, then you have uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, Xavier Howard, like that defense. Oh my God, you, you just put in the pieces over time, be really good, especially having the type of head coach with Brian Flores who knows defensive schemes. And again, a lot of people are like, well, Bill Belichick had everything to do with it. I don't think so. Everyone and their mother is saying that Bill Belichick, yes, he has a look over the defense and yes, he has his his arm around the defense, but it was Brian Flores that helped this defense become what they were with the Patriots and win them that Super Bowl. So that's what I would do. Comment below. Let me know what you think about everything I talked about. Talked about a lot. The tendered players, my new logo. Um, talk about the potential to trade Robert Quinn, how people are interested. Branch and Larson, cut. We're at 15 million now. Unfortunately, Wake might most likely not being with the team anymore. Let me know what you guys think about the trade. Let me know what you think about the people that got cut, who got tagged, who didn't get tagged. And let me know what you guys think about the free agents I want. Let me know about free agents you guys are looking at and free agents you guys want. And let me get to your guys' comment of the day. And this one comes from Nicholas and he asks me, Rashad Jones was a 2010 fifth round pick and he's been one of the top safeties in the league. I definitely would put him over Tannehill. So he, what he's saying is, you know, in my video, I had my honorable mentions and I put Tannehill, Jake Long, and Sean Smith. 
Some of you guys were like, you know, Ronnie Brown, uh, Chris Chambers, he brought up Rashad Jones, you know, there's Olivier Vernon, Kenyon Drake, Lamar Miller. I stuck with the first and second round. Now, the reason I'm bringing this comment up because it's very valid, but also I want another opinion of your guys. So I'm gonna start doing draft themes, draft themed videos going up to the draft. Let me know below if you guys want me to do like a Miami Dolphins draft gems where we drafted someone in the later rounds, like from the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, or undrafted that became really good with the team and have become great with this team. Now with that, I could do all time or I could do the last 20 years. You guys, again, let me know the time period. Also, let me know if you guys want me to do that. But be sure to follow me on Twitter. Everything I talked about, all of this stuff, was tweeted out, retweeted at first. Um, so like I said, a lot of times I could tweet things out and I can comment on things on Twitter before I could sit down, make this video, edit it. Like I said, I'm making this one uh, Thursday night. It's gonna come out Friday morning. So be sure to go follow me on Twitter. Check out my bit, the Bit Boys, my second channel. Um, we've been grinding on there. I've been grinding on that sucker for almost two, three years now. Uh, it's finally taking off because of you guys checking it out, because of you guys subscribing, because of you guys commenting, which me and the other guys greatly appreciate. We're trying our hardest to do that. I'm trying to make this and that my life. Like I told you guys, that's a degree in media. So doing this stuff and, and then incorporating my love for the dolphins, I want this to be my life. So it always helps me when you guys subscribe, gives thumbs up, gives me, um, you know, do this or do that, you know, you always help me get to my dream of making this my career. So I greatly appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up because holy moly, things took off the past couple of days, the past week, all of a sudden the combine was over. All right, trades, cuts, trades, cuts, no tags, tag, like, holy crap. So give this video a thumbs up. A lot of things are going to be happening. Um, be sure to subscribe. I got so many videos planned for you guys. I said uh, this weekend I will be on set shooting a teaser trailer for, um, a movie called Monster Mash. Um, it's made by the guys at Narrow Bridge. I will link them if you want to check them out. I also, a few summers ago, did a feature length film with them, Yellow Scare. I have vlogs for that on this channel if you want to go back, check those out. But be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys. If news happens, you're going to get it from me. Um, but I will see you guys real soon. But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.